Okay, we should be live. Let me check if the wrong microphone in. That's all good. All right. Let's go public on YouTube. save okay we are now live um welcome everyone to this episode of techie tuesdays this is a live session so i have the chat open so if you want to send any messages and questions um you can just send it in the youtube chat um hope you guys have had a good week so far and in this techie tuesdays we're going to go over installing automox through sentinel one using not just remote shell but um remote script orchestration so remote shell is something that you can just enable in policy. Um, you've got sentinels and in policy, scroll down and then remote shells at the bottom. Make sure you have that enabled within your um, within your scope. Um, and I'm going to quickly run through initially how to install automox um, through remote shell. So this will be individual per endpoint, um, specifically on Windows. Now, Automox is a um, company that we are partnered with um, to cover management and patching. Um, they have integrations directly with Sentinel One. So, if you go into Sentinel Marketplace, um, you're able to see type in Automox. Here you go. They have a predetermined, pre made um, integration with Sentinel One. Um, so that's something you can look into if you were to trial Automox, for instance, or trial Sentinel One if you have Automox already. Um, so let's get, let's get straight into it. So I'm going to be uh, configuring Win10 Dev. So I'm just going to close this one down. It's just a normal virtual machine. This is where I um, usually, if I'm have a, like a Windows adversary, I'd use this. But I'm just going to use it specifically for now because we have not the limitation with um, dynamic groups. Uh, we're going to currently we're currently resolving this with Sentinel One as we speak. Um, but dynamic groups seem to have more seem to have more of an issue for rolling out uh, remote script orchestration than um, pinned or manual groups. So I uh, just have one VM here, and I'm going to select it. Go into actions, and let's type in remote shell, and then set a password. Tick okay. Connect to shell. Takes a few seconds to connect properly. And once we're connected, we have um, an administrator shell into that specific endpoint. Now you can do, um, here you go, it's connected. You can actually do remote shell in bulk with the API. Um, but that's not the recommended, uh, that's not recommended best practice. Um, that's when I'd recommend using remote script orchestration, which is a bolt on product to Sentinel one. Um, if you're interested in getting remote script orchestration for your, um, Sentinel one management console, or if you're looking to go in the MSSP route with us and manage that detection, we can also add that to your site. So we are now in the windows 10 folder. So I'm just going to come out from here. You don't have to come up from here. I just think it's clean. Um, okay. Uh, we are going to select the script. So if you look in the description of this live stream, you'll be able to see um, this is the install agent msi.ps1. This is the script for individual installations. Um, We'll get into bulk with um, RSO in just a moment, um, but initially, just with remote shell, you just need this. So, paste it in, um, and uh, this should work. So, let's uh, check if that's installed. Let's go into task manager. We'll go into devices and auto mocks. Um, just double check that this is installed. It has logged me out. I just logged in. Um, so I'm going to quickly log back in again. Yep, 
Yep, and you can see Win10 Dev is um, successfully installed. Um, and then from here, uh, I'll do another Techie Tuesdays where I'll probably next week where I'll show you how to actually operate auto mocks and why you'd need the context of Sentinel One for EDR um, and how they, is it, those integrations work. Um, so that's something to look at. Um, obviously, you've got the actions you could do: scan, configure, um, scan, configure, export, remove, reboot. I'm actually going to quickly remove this so I can show you how to um, install Automox in bulk through Sentinel One. Um, remote script orchestration. So I'm going to remove the device, um, and let's go into more details. And you should see that the Automox agent will either shut itself down if it doesn't. All you need to do is do a restart. Um, Automox agent will be removed from the device, and yeah, the process has been exited. So let's go into, let's close this down. Actually, make sure to terminate your remote script orchestration session, best practice. And let's go into automation. Now this script, um, you can see uh, me and the director, we have been uh, testing this out. So making sure that it's working. So this script is also in the description. This one specifically is, um, in the windows deploy um, .ps1 on se utilities public it is in the description if you would like to get this script um, it's just a simple powershell script and what we've done is if you go into remote ops we have uploaded the script with the upload new script button and if you were to edit this i can, I can just show you um, so you can forget to be in action the os type is windows uh, deploy automox to windows um, and then let's edit the script content. So you can see we've, um, so the, the key is asking for the arguments. So if you were to input the key into the input, so when you're creating the remote script orchestration, you will be able to, you may create in the remote script orchestration script to be, um, uh, to, to be used, uh, you can configure it to require input and what we have done is the input is going to be the key for our Automox instance. Um, so if we go next, it says, yes, input is required, enter Automox token, and this is what an input example will look like. Um, obviously you don't want to include, you don't want to include the token if you're doing multiple things at once. Um, but this just does like a grayed out sort of thing that when you type in, it will remove it and it's just for a preview. Um, so I'm actually going to copy this because this is my um, this is my Automox uh, tenant key, and we'll close this down. And so I'm currently selected in my Daniel demo group with this Win10 Dev environment, and script input. I'm going to put in the key. No output destination. Um, everything's pre-configured. Let's go next, and you can see. The description is just simply deploy Automox on Windows, and the uh, timeout period is this long. Um, I think it's 15 minutes. And uh, let's go next. Everything seems okay, and let's press submit. And let's go into tasks, and let's do recent tasks. Um, it will show up in just a second. It takes takes a moment for it to show up in tasks. Um, I want to see single view, and um, and we'll check Automox once it's rolled out, and hopefully it should be working. Um, if you're enjoying this Techie Tuesdays, make sure to give it a like. You can subscribe to us if you're not already. Um, so we've got four views. You can type in chat. I can see the chat. This is live. So, yeah. Um, let's make sure the script is working last 24 hours. Once that showed up, let's see if Sentinel One is doing any thinking on the device. It doesn't look like it's doing anything massive at the moment. It still takes just a moment. It's similar to like rolling out Star Rules. Um, it takes sort of that amount of time if you have rolled out Star Rules before. Um, here you go. You can see the script is now pending. It's within the queue. I'm going to go into recent single view. Um, and you can, this is some more detail here. Um, yeah. 
So currently pending, does not take that long at all. Um, and when you're doing this in bulk, you'll be able to you'll be able to press bulk view and it will group all of the tasks together. Um, and it will say total current in scope. That will that will tell you how many endpoints you're rolling out the remote script orchestration to. Um, and it will show you how many are pending, how many have failed, how many have completed. So um, if you have any questions, just let me know in the chat. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, the, all of the resources that you need for deploying Automox via Sentinel-1 are in the description. And it should be categorized properly. Um, let's double check. Yes, yeah, so you've got RSO in bulk and then a remote shell for individual. And it says it's completed. Let's see if it's worked. And you can see Automox is now on the agent. Um, the Automox agent is now um, is now running on the device, and if we check Automox, let's give it a quick refresh. And there you go. Uh, Automox is now on the device, and you have access to it within your tenant. Hi there, MK. Um, do you think S works? Sentinel One works good. I uh, I think Sentinel One is one of the best EDR solutions you can get. Um, I don't necessarily base that. That is my opinion, but I base my opinion off of um, sort of the um, adversary tests. So I'll recommend you have a look at my attack evaluations for um, twenty twenty two. Currently, the twenty twenty three is currently being evaluated. Um, but in twenty twenty two, I'll show you how well Sentinel One did, um, and you can just be. Um, uh, so I, I haven't tested um, EDR solutions myself, but this is a test, um, an evaluation of all EDR solutions that are um, active at the moment. So I'll send you this link in the chat and you can just see how much better Sentinel-1 does compared to other participants. Um, but then like, if you were to look at the top participants, so Sentinel-1, you've got Sentinel-1, CrowdStrike, Microsoft. What separates Sentinel-1 from the, the main competitors in the top categories um, is Sentinel One's um, deep uh, deep visibility, which is the telemetry data log. Um, I highly recommend you have a look at my deep visibility videos and creating star rules, but also the um, machine learning based behavioral analysis. Um, it is the most advanced, I can say, the most advanced um, currently in the industry. And um, just a quick example, we've had a customer who has been affected with the Emotet, um, uh, affected by the Emotet campaign, um, Sentinel-1. Sentinel-1, um, we, we tested it in our own environment. Sentinel-1 would detect it before, um, just before the macro would be able to do any execution on the device. So as it was checking it within a VM, it was doing some dodgy stuff. We created star rules, um, which based off of the machine learning can detect it for us. Can you pronounce that again? Disability. I'm not too sure. Did I say disability? I um, can't remember saying that. But, um, but yeah, definitely take a look at the Mitre Attack uh, uh, Ingenuity test for um, Wizard Spider and Sandworm. And let's have a look at the 2023. Um, the results haven't come out yet, still being evaluated. No, I didn't hear, but it was something that stood out. Oh, so uh, the the do you mean the downsides to Sentinel One? Is that what you're asking about? Um, if you okay, well, um, if you do have any questions, you can message me on LinkedIn or you can um, email us at invertsidevigilance.uk. Um, I'm going to end this Techie Tuesdays now. Uh, message me on LinkedIn if you have any questions. Um, thank you very much for watching. What was it that made S stand, uh, Sentinel-1 stand out? Um, it's the machine learning, because um, everything is powered by AI within Sentinel-1. Um, so I believe that the machine learning capabilities for behavioral analysis, so what a pro process is doing, and how it behaves is more advanced than its competitors. Um, so yeah, so thank you very much for watching.
Um, next week, we're going to do some stuff on Automox, um, specifically from the Automox side to Sentinel-1 rather than Sentinel-1 to Automox, which is what we did this week. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.